Last week, I visited Six Flags over Georgia. I have to say, this is one of the stronger Six Flags parks I've been to. The appearance is lush and pleasant, filled with plenty of trees and greenery. Not to mention the extremely strong selection of roller coasters this park has to offer. But how exactly would I rank these rides? Let's take a look at how I rank every roller coaster at Six Flags over Georgia. First up is an honorable mention, Joker's Funhouse Coaster, a Big Dipper by American manufacturer Chance Rides. If you count this as a kiddie coaster, it is by far the best kiddie coaster I've ridden. Unlike the more common Zamperla Family Gravity Coasters, this one is much smoother and a lot more unique. Though it's short, I can honestly say I had a lot of fun riding it. The first drop is pretty good for a small attraction, and sitting in the back even makes it feel a little intense. Another intense feature of the ride is the enclosed downward helix. For something meant for little kids, this was a pretty exciting ride element. Then of course you have the beautiful chase trees surrounding the track in the second half. A very nice feature, and another reason why this is one of the better looking Six Flags parks I've been to. Of course, this is a kids coaster, and it doesn't compare to the park's more exciting ride. Rides, but I highly recommend this for young thrill seekers in the making. Starting off at number 10 is the Dahlonega Mine Train, a mine train by American manufacturer Aerodynamics. For the most part, I have a soft spot for these aero mine trains, though I will admit this is one of the weaker ones I've ridden. On the plus side, it benefits from both an exciting underground drop at the end and a visually appealing woodland setting. Plus, the track is pretty smooth despite its age. However, I found the experience as a whole to be slower and less memorable compared to other mine trains I've ridden, though I did prefer Dahlonega Mine Train to Six Flags Great Adventure's Runaway Mine Train. Don't get me wrong, Dahlonega Mine Train does have its place in the park's lineup. After all, it was one of the park's opening day attractions, debuting all the way back in 1967. It's great for kids and families who are looking for something not too intense, and the fact that it's surrounded by trees helps it a lot. It's more of a relaxing coaster for the most part, and I would recommend it as a warm-up for the park's bigger attractions. Number 9 is the Great American Scream Machine, an out-and-back wooden coaster by American manufacturer William Cobb & Associates. After Logan Joyner of Coaster Kids described this as one of the worst coasters he's ridden, I went on expecting the worst. However, thanks to some very recent track work I was unaware of, this ride was a lot better than I expected. I dare even say I give it a thumbs up. This coaster has a fairly simple out-and-back layout. Thankfully, the park has done a good job of maintaining the screen machine, so the first two-thirds of the ride are actually pretty smooth for the most part. Of course, the last few airtime hills are a bit rough, but even they didn't really bother me. I honestly didn't find this coaster to be any rougher than Racer at King's Island. That vintage wooden coaster rumble actually suits this ride pretty well. As for the layout itself, the first drop over the water is fantastic, and the hills never cease to deliver that classic wooden coaster airtime. Over the past few years, I've come to notice that wooden roller coasters give a special kind of airtime that's pretty hard to describe. It's really something you can only get on a vintage woody with just the right amount of rumble on the track. Overall, if you have a soft spot for classic wooden roller coasters, then you should definitely give this a shot. Number 8 is Batman the Ride, an inverted coaster by Swiss manufacturer B&M. Now you may be concerned that I put this all the way down at number 8, but that doesn't mean I think this ride is bad, not at all. On the contrary, the Batman Inverted Coaster is perhaps my favorite cloned ride out there. You can find this exact same ride operating at 11 different parks around the world, so you know what you're going to get going into this. Like other Batman clones, I found this one to be pretty smooth with a compact and forceful layout. The inversions give a good whip, and the helix will send the blood rushing to your feet. It's a ride I definitely don't mind riding over and over again at different parks. Another thing I love about this model is the inversions are spaced out perfectly, and the pacing of the ride is spectacular. Since it is a clone though, I felt like I could only rank it so high, especially when the park's more original roller coasters had more redeeming factors. Still though, this is a great ride, and it serves its purpose well as the park's only inverted roller coaster. Number 7 is Blue Hawk an MK-1200 by Dutch manufacturer Vacoma. Now this was a pretty tough decision. Though Blue Hawk isn't as smooth as Batman, everything else about this ride delivered, and I found it to be much more memorable. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is one of the most underrated roller coasters I've ridden. I'll even say this is one of the best non-Disney Vacoma coasters I've ridden. First of all, the open vest restraints prevent any headbanging, even on the roughest spots of the track. I feel like Vacoma coasters are a lot better with these kinds of restraints and they allow you to appreciate the strong layouts. 
That's certainly the case for this coaster, as it's packed with five excellent inversions. These include a butterfly element, one of only two in the world, and it was pretty awesome to experience such a rare element. Even more impressive than the inversions were the near-miss moments. Out of all of the roller coasters I've ridden so far, this one seemed to have more head chopper effects than any of them. Throughout the compact layout, you'll come within inches of the track and supports, giving the illusion you're about to smash into them. These near-miss elements really gave the ride the edge for me, and I wouldn't have ranked it so high without them. Not to mention the ride sits on the water, and is almost as much fun to watch as it is to ride. It is pure coaster eye candy in my opinion. Though I've heard mixed reviews from different enthusiasts, I'd personally call it a great ride. Number 6 is the Georgia Scorcher, a stand-up coaster by Swiss manufacturer B&M. This is without a doubt the smoothest and greatest stand-up coaster I've ever been on. Going on to this ride, I've heard a lot of great things about it, even from people who don't like stand-up coasters. Though even with those relatively high expectations, I didn't expect much out of the Scorcher. But after riding it, I have to say that this is well deserving of its acclaim. As you maneuver the layout, you'll come face to face with superb inversions and a thrilling wave turn. All of this while gliding across the smooth and freshly repainted track. In fact, my head didn't touch the restraints once throughout the entire ride. It was truly astonishing how breezy this coaster was, and it allowed me to appreciate its forces and fast-paced intensity. And to be honest, I can see the appeal of stand-up coasters that once existed in the industry. When done properly, it's like riding one of those stand-up racing jet skis. You feel like you're doing all sorts of stunts on one of those, so it's a lot of fun overall. As much as I admittedly prefer to sit down on a roller coaster, Georgia Scorcher is still worth rewriting. Like what you see so far? Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell to turn on notifications. Number 5 is Daredevil Dive, a Eurofighter by German manufacturer Gerslauer. Out of all the Eurofighters I've ridden, this one takes the cake in my book. What makes this coaster in particular stand out is the longer layout. In fact, this is the only Eurofighter I've ridden that's over 2,000 feet long. As with other Eurofighters, this one features a beyond vertical drop. Needless to say, I just love how the physics of this element lead to exciting airtime as you face the ground. The layout itself is consistently fast paced, throwing element after element at you without a dull moment in sight. Not even the mid-course brake runs seem to slow down the enjoyment. Of course, the ride wouldn't be nearly as good without the use of lap bars instead of over-the-shoulder restraints. These give you a much more open experience as you maneuver the dips, bank turns, and inversions. The restraints also make the slight rattle of the track practically insignificant. Sure, Eurofighters may not be big, top-tier attractions, but this one is an excellent addition to the park's lineup. It's a compact looping coaster that does its job well. Number 4 is Superman Ultimate Flight, a flying coaster by Swiss manufacturer B&M. This is the exact same ride as the one at New Jersey Six Flags Great Adventure. Same name, same model, and same track layout. On the contrary, I found the one in Georgia to be vastly superior for one main reason, the setting. While the one at Great Adventure sits over a flat patch of grass, this one is much more terrain based. The scenery gives some extra flavor to the ride's elements, especially the final helix. Here you pass through a small earthy tunnel and encircle a mini plateau. I firmly believe that scenic elements can make even cloned rides like this really stand out. In this case, they substantially add to the dreamlike flying experience these rides are built for. Great scenery aside, the layout is just as exciting as the one in New Jersey. The twists and turns add up to a spectacular flying experience. And that pretzel loop is so intense, it's almost too much to handle. In this picture alone, you can see how intense the g-forces are, and you're bound to feel them pressing down on you with full force. Despite its delicious looking shape, this pretzel is not for the faint of heart. To sum it all up, if you love flying coasters, Superman is right up your alley. Number 3 is Mindbender, a steel coaster by German manufacturer Schwarzkopf. Speaking of terrain, let's take a look at a ride that's still wildly entertaining after 41 years of operation. This classic Schwarzkopf coaster is aged like a fine chateau wine. Imagine taking Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas and making it a longer and much more scenic terrain coaster. The first half of the ride will send you zooming past the trees, while the second half will take you over a stunning water feature. All the while, you'll undergo thrilling drops, great pops of airtime, and of course, two insurmountably forceful vertical loops. 
loops. These inversions don't mess around. The more circular loops exert a significant amount of g-forces on the passengers. Don't be surprised if you gray out or even black out on these loops. Another great thing about this ride is the pacing. While the loops on Shockwave are back to back, Mindbender's loops are more evenly distributed throughout the course. And while Shockwave is technically longer, the variety in scenery makes Mindbender feel longer. I will admit this coaster wasn't as smooth as the other Schwarzkopf's I've ridden, but considering its age and how forceful it is throughout, I'd consider the rattle to be a minuscule nitpick. You wouldn't expect a ride over 40 years old to hold up this well, but that's just the power of Schwarzkopf. Number 2 is Twisted Cyclone, an iBox hybrid coaster from American manufacturer RMC. This may be the shortest RMC I've ridden, but it still makes the most out of its layout. It manages to put several memorable elements together into a strong work of art worth checking out. These elements include a slightly curved first drop, a unique reverse cobra roll, an exhilarating zero-g roll, and my personal favorite, the downward wave turn. This turn gives the undeniable sensation of sideways airtime that is made even more exciting by its downward exit. There's never a single boring or out-of-place moment on this ride. Even the wavy section before the lift hill is entertaining. Like other RMCs, you're also guaranteed to experience intense ejector airtime, all while sailing through on the that smooth iBox track. For me, the best place to be is by far the back row, where the forces of drag contribute to a breathtakingly intense ride. Do I wish it was longer? Sure, but what it has to offer is more than worthy of re-riding. It's one of those coasters I could easily see myself marathoning. If you're an RMC-holic like I am, you'd be hard-pressed not to enjoy this one. And finally, we've come to number one and I'm gonna give it to Goliath, a hyper coaster by Swiss manufacturer BNM. Some of you may be surprised that I rank this above Twisted Cyclone, but I'll explain. Both of these coasters are wildly enjoyable and have excellent aspects to them. The fact is though that Goliath is a much longer ride, so that gave it the very slight edge for me. Picture this, both rides are like amazing parfait desserts, but Goliath is topped with a slight drizzle of caramel. This is unquestionably one of the best B&M hypers I've ever been on. Of course, you can never go wrong with a B&M hyper, but Goliath goes above and beyond to be both exhilarating and incredibly memorable. Starting off with a fantastic first First drop, you enter a layout jam-packed with that classic floater airtime hypers are known for. Like other rides of this kind, the lap bars allow you to fully experience said airtime, and allow for a much more open feeling as you soar through the sky. What makes this ride even better is its massive 540 degree helix. This thing is enormous. As you're sent downwards, you quickly gain momentum, and the g-force it exerts makes it by far the most intense moment on any B&M hyper, at least in my opinion. I admit, I grayed out on this one, and I'm certain many of you will too. Furthermore, the last section of the ride features what I believe to be the most intense airtime on a B&M Hyper. The small hills towards the end will send you practically flying out of your seat. This borderline ejector airtime is unlike anything I've seen on this kind of attraction, and it really ends the ride on a high note. If you ever visit Six Flags over Georgia, Goliath is a must do. Thanks for watching everyone, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.